11 says, in his presence is fullness of joy. And today we've come together as God's people and we are guaranteed that there is fullness of joy today. And maybe this is your first time, maybe you've been here for a short time, maybe you've been here for countless times. I hope and pray that you would experience the joy that is here in his presence. We're going to continue our series today. My name is Dale and I, I'm going to teach today. Continuing on our series, I'm with you in spirit. 
It's going to be an incredible time in the Word of God as we learn that Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, so we should as well. We're going to take a little survey. You're going to help me out with a survey. And by the time we leave this place, we're going to be closer to him and to each other. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your goodness and your grace. And thank you that in your presence, there is fullness of joy. May we experience that today for your glory and reputation, I pray. And everyone said amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Amen, amen. Now we get to sing a song about all of our testimonies. If you found Jesus, this is our story. If you don't know who Jesus is, this is it. Lord, I confess that I've been a criminal. I've stolen your bread and sang my own song. Jesus came. I love this part. Scarlet sins had a crimson cost. You nailed my dead to that old rugged cross. An empty slate at the empty grave. Thank God that stone was rolled.
that chorus one more time as we share our testimonies of what Jesus did for us and how he wiped us clean. We sing this. The scarlet sins had a crimson cause. You nailed my debt to that hole. Yeah, come on, church, sing it out. In empty slate at the empty grave. Thank God that stone. Come on, let's keep singing that. The scarlet sin. The scarlet sins. Come on. And just like how we are meant to worship with joy and exuberance, God, it says, for the joy set before you, you endured the cross because on the other side of the cross, you saw us, God. You saw us. And as you endured the pain, the suffering, you knew that on the other side of that moment was a family restored. On the other side of that moment was an addiction freed from. On the other side of that moment was prodigals coming home. So Lord, we give you glory and praise for what you did that day and the fact that you did not leave it that way because the tomb is empty. Give you glory, we give you honor forevermore and all God's children said, amen, amen. Can we lift up praise, church? Well, good morning, People's Church. You can go ahead and take your seats. If we have not met yet before, my name is Erin, and I am so excited to welcome you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. We are so happy to have you all here with us today, but especially if you are a VIP. So if you have never been here before, or maybe you've been here but a really long time, you are a very important person to us, and we just wanna get to know you. So on your way out at the end of the gathering, make sure that you stop in the VIP room. It's on the left-hand side as you walk through the lobby. Head in there, get a present, meet the volunteers. We want to learn your name. We want to learn your story. Now, wasn't last Sunday such an amazing time? Go Sunday. We had Dick Brogdon with us. We got the chance to meet just a few of our Go partners, our missionaries who we support worldwide. It was such a beautiful day, and we are so grateful to be able to learn from all of the things that our Go partners are doing, see the things and the missions and the organizations that we are supporting in action. And more locally, yesterday, we had a I Love My City Serve Day at Fresno Rescue Mission Rescue the Children. So I just want to say a big thank you to every single one of you who came out and served. We got to paint their chapel. We painted another room for them. A few of our volunteers even organized one of their stores for them. So I just want to say thank you so much to every single one who came and served and made a difference in restoring dignity to the lives of the people who live at the Fresno Rescue Mission. Even something as fresh as a coat of paint can really change how it feels in a room and how it feels for them to live there. And so thank you so much. Now, as you can see, I've got something in my hand. So whether it is global outreach or local outreach, this is something that we want you to get plugged into and understand more about here at People's Church. So I am holding this newsletter. You can get this by scanning the QR code on the screen. You can come talk to me in the lobby. If you write newsletter on the Connect card, I will find you, I will get you your newsletter. We want you to understand and have the ability to see all of the amazing things that happen in outreach here at People's Church, whether that is 
you want to sign up for an I Love My City Serve Day, you want to hear about the new Go Partners who we have and how you can pray for them. Maybe you want to see how you can give to the Care Center or get involved with the Care Center, our weekly food pantry and clothing distribution. There are so many things going on here weekly that People's Church does to support global outreach and local outreach. And we just want you to be a part. We want you to pray with us. We want you to have the communication to see all that God is doing. And so if you have interest in this newsletter or maybe signing up for a serve day, learning more about the global outreach partners who we do support, come find me in the lobby. I would love to talk to you. I have a table. I will give you information, get you this newsletter. The last announcement is that we do have engaged classes that are happening today. That will be at 11 a.m. in the VIP room. This is a great place to learn more about People's Church, get involved, kind of hear what we are about as a faith family. And our last thing for today is our tithe and our offering. So for those who don't know, a tithe is simply the 10%, the first 10% of everything that we earn, that belongs back to God. We need to give that to him faithfully and obediently because that is really all that he asks in terms of our resources is just that 10% that we need to give obediently. And the offering is when the Lord calls you to give more generously because we know that when we know Jesus, we give generously. We give more than we are called to. We give more than is mandated. And that can go to things like global outreach, that can go to pay it forward, that can go to the care center, whatever is on your heart that maybe you have a passion for. That is what that above and beyond generosity can go to. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and pray, but if you wanna give, you can do so by using the QR codes on the back of your chairs. We have push pay, we have the giving kiosks, we have the boxes so that you can drop an envelope in there. And I just wanna thank you for partnering with everything that God is doing through this church. So Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your mission, of your body, for allowing us to participate in all of the amazing things that happen here. I pray for all of the things that are given, all of the resources that are given today, that you would multiply them, that they would go further because of you, that they would reach more people because of you, that they would do more because they are in your hands. I pray this all in your name, amen. So if you're a part of this faith family, you know what happens when the screen goes up, but if you're new, you're here for a special Sunday. Can we lift up praise for baptisms coming up? We're gonna see people go public with their faith. So would you stand with us? Would you lift up a shout of praise every time you see a person go in? Let's go. There's 
Let's thank God for his transformation in our lives. The story of redemption for each and every one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. There we go. Hey, if you can, uh, you know, just say hi to those around you without doing it for getting it, getting into any counseling scenarios. Great to see you today. Welcome those that are watching online right now. I'm so glad that you're watching as well. We're going to have a great day as we've already had these baptisms and now we're going to go and study the word of God. So I'm so glad that you're with us. Hey, people, church, how you doing? Great to be back. If you didn't know, you should know that uh, I was in Israel the last two weeks with a group of 41 of us, and here's the picture of us at Caesarea. There we are, 41 of us. Yes. What a great time we had. And you should go on our next Israel trip, by the way. Let's take, a, let's take 2,000 people. How about it? That would be drastic. <laughs> anyway, great to see you today. My name is Dale, and I could te teach here most weeks. But before we get into our teaching today, here's I need your help. We have experienced and we're experiencing... Uh, even from the summer months on, a increased attendance here each and every Sunday. And so we're looking at, again, adding an, a third gathering, which we've had for years. But now we're looking at a adding a third gathering again. But we want your input on when that gathering would be. And so we have a survey for you that I need you to take. Those that are watching online right now, you can take this as well, whether you're in the valley or Obviously, if you're outside the valley, welcome those that are watching right now. We have friends in Colorado. We have friends in Israel watching right now. We have friends in Wisconsin and Arizona and Florida and Minnesota. Anyway, we have uh, uh, people all over. And, you know, it, it may not be critical that you in other states are helping us out or other nations. But those here in the valley. Robert, come up here and help give some instructions on what they can do to help us fill out this short survey that will take them... Three, four minutes, yes? A minute and a half. A minute and a half. 90 seconds. It will take you 90 seconds to fill out this survey. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. All right. All right. So there are three ways within the gathering. You have a card in front of your seat backs that has a blue top on it that simply says, we want to hear from you because we want to hear from you. If you are sitting in a seat that does not have a seat back in front of you, reach to the one behind you. There's plenty in that one as well. So that's if you like pen and paper. If you're a digital guy like me, you can scan the QR code on the screen, or you can scan the QR code on the seat back. Especially if you're on, in a row that doesn't have a seat back, you can use the QR code on the screen. That will take you to our Connect page, which at the very top has a thing that says, we want to hear from you. Are you getting the theme? Yes. We want to hear from you. We want to hear we from you. We need to hear from you. We them. need to hear from you. And if you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, or on the People's Church website, the moderator is going to drop a link in there, and you can also fill out the survey there. And lastly, if you're watching on demand, in our app, the very, very top, it says survey, and you can fill out the survey there. 90 seconds, we want to hear from you. If they fill out the hard copy, where should they put it when they're done? Great question, Pastor Dale. There's blue buckets at the end of the gathering that we will be receiving these. Blue square, blue buckets. Excellent. Thank you so much, Robert, for your help with this. This will help us determine and give you input on when that third gathering would be. So we have some options for you there. We really would appreciate you helping us out because we want to hear from you. All right? All right. All right. Now, we are in this series called With You in Spirit. And today, normally, if you're, if, if you're not... a Part of, if you haven't been around for a while, normally I open up a, a text and we read from a text. 
And today I'm not going to do that, but you are going to get a lot of scripture today. All right? So, and some of that will be on the, if you want to, I, I will look at a few passages. We're going to be in the books of the books of Luke and Acts today. And uh, here's what I know when we're thinking about and thinking about the Holy Spirit in our lives. That we are either people that spread the Spirit or we spread the flesh. Which are you? Do you spread the flesh or do you spread the spirit? You know, there's in, in consumer transactions, there's the supplier, there's the middleman, and then there's the consumer or the, the receiver. And if you're going to buy a candy bar somewhere or something like that, you are going to buy it at a store. And that store is not the supplier, they're just the middleman. But in the spirit world, we are the middleman for the spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is the supplier, and that there's a world that needs the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we, we are the middleman. Are you a conduit for the Holy Spirit to spread into our world or all around us? And I know that when we talk about the Holy Spirit, because the, the idea that life gets tough, Grief and loss gets overwhelming. Burdens are heavy. How do we live our life the way God intended us to live? How do we resist sin when we are so easily given to temptation? Hopefully that we've come to the place in our lives, spiritually, where we understand the Holy Spirit helps us in those moments and in those times of deficiency. But I know that when we talk about the Holy Spirit, there are different responses, there are those that haven't been around church and haven't, you know, and they're just, you're just open to what, you know, what the Bible says and what God is saying about any topic, including the Holy Spirit. There are those of us in the room that have had maybe a negative experience of how the Holy Spirit was portrayed or practiced. There are extreme stories, I know, in our fellowship of even things like, you know, the handling of snakes. I'm not going to get there. And if you have your snake with you, keep it in your bag because we don't do that here. But maybe it's a negative experience because of some of the misuses of the Holy Spirit. In the, even in the, in the New Testament, Paul addresses a lot of extremes and misuses of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you're like me, who I, my family, I did not grow up in a pastor's home, as a lot of you know. My dad was in heavy excavation and construction, and, but we were faithful to church, and we, I grew up in a Pentecostal church where we believed in the active and up-to-date gifts and operations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I'm familiar with and at ease with the activity of the Holy Spirit, including things like Speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, things like passionate worship, and, and even, even things like when the Holy Spirit really gets in people, into people's lives and some of the dramatic physical things that take place when that happens, I have seen and am familiar with and at ease in all of those situations. And no matter what our background is, this is the point that I want to, one of the points I want to get across today, and that Jesus is and was on this earth. He was a Pentecostal. And, I, if, and if, if you don't believe that, he, if you want to use the term charismatic, he was a charismatic on this earth. So even as we begin today, I'm going to give you the most sermons. Uh, I don't usually say it, but I, give you, uh, but I have a big idea, meaning a point that I want to make and that, I, and that I, I keep that point that I'm making as I'm studying ever in front of me and continue to build around that main idea, the big idea. Today, I'm going to give you the big idea. In fact, I'm going to give you the big idea over and over and over and over again, all right? Here's the big idea. Let's look at it. This is the big idea of today. Jesus walked, when he was on this earth, he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. How much more should we? Can we say this big idea together, please? Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. How much more should we? Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to show this. How much more should we? The Gospel of Luke is where we're going to 
we're, we're going to reference Luke and Acts, this entire message. Because Luke goes at great lengths to prove this point, that the Holy Spirit was actively involved in Jesus' life. All the Gospels are different. They are like a diamond. They all show us different aspects to the life and the ministry of Jesus. That's what the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's what they're there for, to show us the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. So, one of Luke's major themes is Jesus' source of power was the Holy Spirit. Well, you, I, thought, I thought that his source of power was that he was God. Well, yes, but the fact is, is that Luke is going to point out that that source that was the Holy Spirit. This is what I mean by that, is Jesus, in Philippians chapter 2, we hear, we see this phrase, chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Jesus became nothing, in some of your Bibles, or Jesus emptied himself. In theological circles, we call it the kenosis, which is the emptying himself. That's the idea. He emptied himself, meaning he limited his access to his godness and his god power while he was on this earth. He limited his access. He did not cease from being God and part of the Godhead, but he limited his access to all of his God powers. So that, so that we know that when he was in, you know, in, in high school and the teacher asked a question, Jesus didn't sit there and go, well, I know the answer to that because I'm omniscient. Or he didn't. He didn't lie in his crib thinking about physics and quarks and, you know, and all the things that, you know, are beyond our comprehension. He thought baby thoughts when he was a baby. He thought godly junior high thoughts when he was in junior. You didn't think that was possible, and yet he did. It says in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that the Lord Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature. He grew in wisdom and in stature. Well, how does God, being God, grow in wisdom? He limited his, his, his God access so that he would grow in wisdom as any of us would grow in wisdom is the point. He, in Matthew chapter 24, he says, he didn't even know the day or the hour of his return, only the Father in heaven. He doesn't know when he's going to return. No, only the Father in heaven knew when he would return. So here's the question. So he has limited his God, his Godness, his God power while he's on this earth to live like you and me. So here's the question. When he limited himself in his Godness, his God power, how does he overcome sin? How does he resist the devil? How does he have powerful and wonderful communion with his heavenly father? How does he see into situations and kind of know what to do? How does he know what to say and when to say it? How does he do miraculous signs and wonders? How does he do all of these things? He does it with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the great news is, you and I have access to that same Holy Spirit. Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. How much more should we? He walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Luke, Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, also, if you did not know, wrote the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Acts. It would be easier, I think, for us to connect them if we didn't have John in between Luke and Acts. Interestingly enough, if you look at the length of them, they were, they were both uh, uh, the <laughs> needless information, I guess, but they, the longest scrolls of that time were 35 feet long, and both Luke and Acts are about 35 feet long on a scroll. Interesting. He wrote them both, and in doing so, he showed, and so these are the parallels that I want to draw today, that we're going to see Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in the book of Luke, 
And then in Acts, we're going to see the church and the power of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And there are some powerful similarities that we will see. Because, we, yes, the death of Jesus is important. And even the Apostles' Creed says this. Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and rose again the third day. So we go right from his birth right to his death. Instead of understanding that it's his life also that we can learn from. That's why the Gospels are there to show us the life of Jesus, how he lived life, so that you and I can also learn what it is to live this life in power and in victory. So Jesus is going to be the theme of the Holy Spirit in Luke, and the church is going to be the theme of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. There's these parables. Let's just start with the, so that's what I'm going to do for the next few moments, okay? Are you still with me? All right. You right here? Remember the big idea, Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. How much more should we? All right. So, let's just start at his birth and the church's birth. The Jesus' birth is recorded in Luke, and the church's birth is recorded in the book of Acts. In Luke, Jesus' birth is recorded in Luke chapter 1, where it says, the Holy Spirit, talking to Mary, the Virgin Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and, he, and the Most High will overshadow you. So now the Holy Spirit is very active in the very birth of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the Most High will overshadow you. And then his ministry begins, Jesus' ministry begins, as he begins his three-year ministry, it begins with him being baptized, baptized, and the Holy Spirit comes in the bodily form of a, of a dove. Then in the book of Acts, now we go to the church, and you see in the same way the church in Acts chapter 2 was born at a, the baptism of the Holy Spirit descending on the people of God. Think of Jesus' first sermon and the church's first sermon. Jesus' first sermon takes place in Luke chapter 4, and it's in his hometown of Nazareth. He opens the scroll and he reads, and this is what he reads, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach deliverance and, and freedom for those who are captive is the gist of that sermon. Peter's first sermon is about the Spirit's power on the church to testify about who Jesus is all around the world. It's interesting that in Luke, so Jesus, in the book of Luke, Jesus is going to go out into the wilderness to be tempted. This is after his baptism. He goes out into the wilderness to be tempted. This is Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And it says that he was full of the Holy Spirit and by, he, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. He is the only gospel writer that specifically states that as he's going out into the wilderness, he's doing so, being led and full of the Holy Spirit. Because Luke's continued message is Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. So he's walking in the power of the Holy Spirit after the, ba after the disciples are baptized. They're dragged in front of the Sanhedrin, another test of theirs. And the Bible says that they are full of the Holy Spirit as they, dress, as they address these religious leaders of their day that they're, that they're being accused by. In, in Luke, Jesus gets sent out by the power of the Holy Spirit to declare the message of the kingdom of God. In the book of Acts, the church gets sent out by the power of the Holy Spirit to declare the message of who Jesus is. Luke is continually drawing these parallels between Jesus and the Holy Spirit in Luke and, and the church and the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. Am I driving this home? Because the big idea is this. That Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, how much more should you and me? How much more should we? Let's just talk about, for a few moments, miracles. Miracles that took place. Jesus, 
It says in Luke chapter 5, verse 7, in fact, I'm going to put it up here. Look what it says. It says, and the power of the Lord was present with Jesus to heal the sick. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. This scenario is in the town Mark. This is when Jesus heals the paralytic. He is lowered. It's a crowd. It's a crowded house. The, the people, these four guys can't get their friend in, so they tear the roof off. This happens in Capernaum. We know that because Mark in Mark chapter 2 lets us know this, the exact location. And if you're with me, if you've ever been with me on the trip to Israel, you've been to this, you know, to this very town of Capernaum. We were there just days ago where Jesus now heals this paralytic. But the Bible says this in- interesting thing that the power of the Lord was on, the spirit of the Lord was present, the power of the Lord is present with Jesus to heal the sick. And it's just like, well, of course the power of the Lord is there. No, Luke is making this powerful connection that the reason he has, a, he, the reason he has this ability and this power and this authority was because of the Holy Spirit. In Acts, in Acts, the power of the Holy Spirit then comes on the disciples to do miraculous signs. They can speak in tongues because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Can, I, want you to see a, I want you to see a passage with me. Go to Acts chapter 13. All right? Are you still with me? All right. Ma- Matthew. Acts chapter 13. Matthew. Genesis, Exodus, Matthew. All right. And then Acts. All right. Acts chapter 13. This is an interesting story. Acts chapter 13. Paul and Barnabas are on the island of Cyprus, which is just to the west of the, today, it's still there, uh, just to the west of Israel in the Mediterranean Sea. Paul and Barnabas, it's talking about, this is now chapter 13, Acts chapter 13, verse 4. Are you there? Say, I'm there. The two of them sent on their way by what? What? The Holy Spirit. They went down to Seleucia, and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled, verse 6, through the whole island until they came to Paphos, where they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet, prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant to the, of the pro- proconsul Sergio Paulus. The proconsul an intelligent man sent for Barnabas and Saul, or Paul, because he wanted to hear the word of God. Look at verse 8. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for that was what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. So they're trying to dissuade someone from coming to faith in Jesus. Verse 9. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, and what does it say now? It describes him. Filled with the Holy Spirit, look what he does. He looked straight at Elimus and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. This is kind of one of those reverse miracles. Right? It is a miracle, but instead of bringing sight... He brings blindness to this guy for a season. Now, don't you you get any ideas, friends. You got to be full of the Holy Spirit to do this. And, but even this power, twice, because of the Holy Spirit, brought this miracle. Philip, in Acts chapter 8, Philip baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch, the Bible says, and then the Spirit teleported him across the desert right after he was done baptizing the eunuch. Nothing like that happened in our baptism today, thankfully. But these miracles that took place because of the Holy Spirit, prophecies, speaking out God's agenda or telling what is ahead takes place in the book of Acts and in the book of Luke. In the book of Luke, you see this through you see this through Elizabeth when the Spirit pronounces God's blessing on Mary. Simeon was promised that he, by the Holy Spirit, that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Messiah in a beautifully prophetic way, is what we see in the book of Luke. 
And now we see in the book of Acts, you see Peter's first sermon, he quotes from the prophet Joel about how the Holy Spirit will come and he will descend upon us in these last days. Interesting, there's a guy, a, a guy named Agabus, who kind of shows up twice in the book of Acts. Once in chapter 11 and once in chapter 21. And in chapter 11, he comes and the Bible says that full of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit told him to say there's going to be a famine coming and this is so that the church could prepare for it. And then in chapter 21, he has a prophecy for Paul about, and he ties himself up, he, he, Agabus ties himself up and he says to Paul, this is essentially what's going to happen to you as you go to Jerusalem warning him and telling him of what is going to happen as he enters Jerusalem. And, of course, Paul goes anyway, which he was supposed to do. But Agabus, this guy that pops out of nowhere, is a prophet of God and speaks what God needs to get, get across. This is incredible stuff. And you say, what in the world? You're call, talking about teleporting. You're talking about prophesying. You're talking about all these things. And I, ah, what's happening here? When are we bringing out the snakes? We're not bringing out the snakes. Amen. Miracles, prophecy, preaching. Am I the only preacher in this room? Am I the only preacher in this room? I am speaking to a room full and an audience online full of preachers. Amen. You don't have to have a title to declare the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to preach the good news of Jesus. I am preaching to preachers, amen? I want to get that across. And by the way, the big idea of this message is that Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. How much more should we? Preaching. In Luke chapter 4, Verse 14, it talks about Jesus, and right, right before his first sermon, it says that Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and then he began to preach. The same language is used in the book of Acts by Luke, where Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he preached, and 3,000 people began the church as they, gave the, as they became faithful followers of Jesus Christ. In, in chapter 4, again, of the book of Acts, Peter and John were filled with the Holy Spirit when they preached before the Sanhedrin. Look at Acts chapter 4, verse 31 on the screen. It says this, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled, what? With the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. Early Christians, the church was filled with the Holy Spirit, so they went out preaching and proclaiming the word of God. Jesus told the apostles that they can depend on the Holy Spirit when they preach. Look at Luke chapter 12. It says this. And when, you bring, when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the what? The Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. This has happened, hasn't it, to you? Preaching, not only miracles, not only prophecy, not only preaching, but the power of joy in our lives because of the Holy Spirit. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 21 in the book about Jesus. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that the church, that as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they had gladness of heart. Look at Acts chapter 13, verse 52. It says, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Have you ever rejoiced in the Holy Spirit? A person that is filled with the Holy Spirit is going to be a person that is filled with joy. Yes? Yes? person that is filled with the Holy Spirit, a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit, our gatherings are going to be characterized by joy. Yes? 
Some of you are going to want to leave now. Psalm 35, verse 27 says, May those who delight in salvation shout for joy. <laughs> Nicely done. I thought I was going to have to bring this back and go, it's a command, not a suggestion, not a thought, not an idea. May those who delight in salvation shout for joy. Yes! Yes! The chapel, they're, they're, they're raising the roof right now. The G.L. Johnson Chapel. They, they know what they're doing. Galatians 5 says, Be filled with the Spirit, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Psalm 1611, that in His presence is fullness of joy. Our gatherings have got to be characterized if we are filled with the Holy Spirit with exuberance and joy and shouting at times. And you say, it's not my personality. Right? Well, the crazy thing is, I have a feeling that joy would overwhelm you if you won $250 million in the lottery. All of a sudden, you would smile for the first time in a very long time, wouldn't you? And maybe that would happen, but you're not filled with joy in a place like this. Maybe that's because you value the lottery more than you value the presence of God. We should be joyful in our worship. We should be joyful. May those who delight in salvation shout for joy. And this is all available upon request. In the book of Luke and in the book of Acts, it's available upon request. Look at Luke chapter 11. He says this, which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion instead of nutrition harm? If you then... Though you are evil, know what it is to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who will ask him? I am not a perfect husband. I know that's a shock to you. It's not a shock to one person in this room. I'm not a perfect husband, and I... I but Joni... As we're going to Israel, she, Joni never asks. For, Joni doesn't ask for anything, right? As I go to Israel, I go on trips. She doesn't ask for anything. And this time she said, you know what I would kind of like? I would kind of like a necklace that has my name in Hebrew. So I got her lotion. Lotion's really good in Israel. The Ahava, it's that sea, it's the Dead Sea lotion. I did, I, did, I got our lotion. But also, even though, even though I'm evil and you're evil, guess what I did? I got her a necklace that has her name on it in Hebrew. Amen. Even though my heart is dark and I'm not perfect and I know how to give a good gift, especially when someone asks me for something. How much more the Heavenly Father? How much more your Heavenly Father? When you ask for something like the Holy Spirit and His power in your life, how much more would He love to give you the Holy Spirit? Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. How much more should we? The point of the Bible all throughout Scripture is Zechariah 4.6 that when you're trying to do anything in this life, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So who do you depend on for victory to overcome in the midst of grief and loss and difficulty 
in the midst of struggles and frustration, trying to be who God wants you to be, trying to be what God called you to be, trying to be the husband you need to be, the parent you need to be. It just seems to me that we are looking so often at the wrong source of power. And often that source of power is in and of ourselves. And long ago I realized I don't have it in me. Where are you going to get the power? Jesus overcame the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. The early church overcame the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. We today can overcome the world by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we so often look to the wrong source. That we are still being dictated by fear, not the Holy Spirit in our lives. We're still being dictated in this life to, by what we read all around us instead of by the Holy Spirit teaching us and showing us. Let me give you the big idea before we close one more time, and that is Jesus walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. How much more should you and I? Do you have the same access to the Holy Spirit I have? Are you sure? You have the same access to the Holy Spirit I do. Now here's a bigger question. Do you have the same access that Jesus had to the Holy Spirit? What? Yes. Yes, we do. And the enemy of your soul wants to keep you from the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why I think so many people have negative experiences because the enemy wants to keep us from the power of the Holy Spirit. And so now we want to stay away from that topic because it's been misused and abused and everything else. And so we just want, oh, I'm just going to stay clear of that. That's exactly what the enemy would like. Because he may not be able to keep you from heaven. But if he can keep you powerless on your way there, he wins. Because with the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the capacity now to change the world around us. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And all we have to do is ask. Will you bow your heads with me, please? Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that today that first and foremost there may be people here that the Holy Spirit is working their lives and they're coming to a place where they go, I need Jesus. I need to give my life to Jesus. Because it's only by way of the Holy Spirit that we even have that recognition and that understanding. And so today you're working in people's lives just like you worked in every person that got baptized today. But now you're working some of our lives, watching online, right here in this room, in the G.L. Johnson Chapel, you're working in our hearts, and I just pray with those right now that would say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I tried to do it on my own, and it doesn't work. So, Father, right now, these people are in this room that need to give their life to you, that they, may they turn to you. And right before I pray for those that are just, just giving your life to Jesus as heads are bowed, I would just like to know, and those that are online right now, you can register with the monitor right there. You can just tell them you're responding. And in this room today, that you would just give me an upraised hand that I can pray for you where you sit and where I stand of, yes, today. The Holy Spirit's been working my life to give my life to Jesus. And you'd raise your hand and say, Dale, you're, you're praying with me and for me right now in this room, all across this room. You'd raise your hand and say, that's me right now. That's me. Thank you. In the balcony, on this main floor. Thank you. Thank you. 
You can put them down. Father, in Jesus' name, those that are just making this decision, not to join a church, but to become part of a great family of those who follow Jesus. Shame removed, sins gone because we turn away from that and we repent of that. And now we're children of God because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, thank you that now we're going to walk in your way. We're not going to, we, we wish it would be in perfection, but Father, just by the power of the Holy Spirit, now may we walk for you, live for you, sensing your presence all along the way. And Father, secondly, those of us overwhelmed by loss and grief, frustrated by an inability to resist temptation. We've allowed the pressures of this world to get to us. We aren't what you've intended us to be. And Lord, we have the power of the Holy Spirit to get us back on track. And we right now just say, Lord, give us the Holy Spirit. We request, just give us the Holy Spirit. And you will give us the Holy Spirit. And not only will we have power in our lives and authority, we will have joy, joy unspeakable, overwhelming joy. Thank you, Lord, for that. And Father, in this place, we just seek you and say, Lord, give us as a church and as individuals, give us the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, there's nothing better than Let's stand together. Pastors and counsel, you come to the front of the room, please, as we make ourselves available to pray with those who would like to pray. Before I pray a prayer of blessing over you today, I want to give you two points of instruction. Those of you who made the decision to follow Jesus today, not join a church, but to follow Jesus, we have some information for you on this QR code. You can also get it in the VIP room as you go. This is just your next step spiritually. What do you do from here? It's not about joining people's church. It's about your life in Jesus. We have a Gospel of John that we'd love to give to you in the VIP room as well. But this, is, this will get you going and started on your journey with Jesus. Secondly, there are people at the front of this room that would love to pray with you about anything that is going on in your life, including your desire just to have the Holy Spirit in your life. Please take advantage of these very people that would love to do that. And maybe there's a person that came with you that would, you'd love to pray with right next to you before you leave this room. That would be wonderful as well, just to take advantage of that as well. And don't forget to drop off your surveys in a little practical business so that you can give us some information as it relates to our forward progress as a church. Now, will you get in a posture where I can pray a prayer of blessing over you today? the balcony main floor and the online in the G.L. Johnson Chapel, I just speak the blessings of the Almighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your face is going to shine upon us and you're going to be gracious to us and give us peace. Lord, you're going to bless us this week that with every breath we take, we're going to realize that we can have the power of the Holy Spirit and that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to bring a new authority a new confidence, not in ourselves, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, this week, we're going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus did. And I speak in Jesus' name the blessing of that.
I speak in Jesus' name. The power, Lord God, you're going to see miracles take place this very week. We're going to see miracles take place in our own physical bodies, in our own, in our own lives, as well as those around us. And Father, in Jesus' name, may the hands that I am speaking right be, ble- be used for miraculous works of the power of God this very week in Jesus' name. I speak, Lord Jesus, for peace and harmony in our home and that our homes would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, our homes would be places of joy. I speak, Lord God, that around us in our influence, we would be, we would be distributors of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name, that you would powerfully give us purpose each and every day to live. You'd make us leaders and not followers, the head and not the tail. And Father, that you'd give us great friends, great health, and God's very, very best as we live each and every moment this week. And I pray this for the glory of God and the reputation of Jesus Christ in our world today. And everyone said amen. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. See you next Sunday as we continue this series.